Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get into the biggest thing to expect as we get into this upcoming hurricane season. So thank you for taking the time to subscribe so we can build this weather community as we get closer to the hurricane season. Now, some of these storms, you may know about them. Of course, a lot of us do, unfortunately. Uh, Maria, you get back toward a uh, Harvey. Uh, these are some of the biggest, strongest storms we've had. All of them went through rapid intensification. And that is going to be a huge concern. That is the biggest concern as we get into the upcoming season. So what is that? And I want to show you what I'm seeing right now in the ocean as it pertains to rapid intensification. Well, uh, when we talk about the water, you hear a lot about, well, the water has to be warm for hurricanes to develop. Every season, it's just about warm enough. It is pretty much warm enough period. But what is different is what we're really looking out for is the depth of the warm water. So you look at the ocean, the top of the ocean is usually warm. But when that warm water stretches down uh, more underneath, that's a big issue. And here's why. And this is what I'm watching out for. Now, when you have a hurricane roll over the water, what it does is there's a lot of upwelling. So it churns up the water and then that cooler water down below lifts up. And then the storm doesn't necessarily have anything to really feed off of, or at least as much. So you get this upwelling. But the problem this upcoming season will be, as a hurricane moves over the water, the depth of the warm water is so far down there that even as it churns up the water, it just brings up more warm water not necessarily cool water. And that's why we get rapid intensification because it goes over this pocket of high heat content. That's what it's called and that's what this map is showing. And this is what I'm watching out for as we get into the hurricane season. Here's the Gulf of Mexico. You get back through the Caribbean, out into the Atlantic. You see these brighter colors? That's where there is high heat content, exceptionally high. We're running about a month, a month and a half uh, ahead of schedule for the heat content. So again, what the heck is that? It's not just uh, warm water, but it is warm water that, that goes way down below. So if you have, let me break it down a little bit further where these brighter colors are. If you have a developing storm, a tropical storm or a hurricane, and it rolls over these pockets here, that's where we could get some rapid intensification. Now, there's other things you need to uh, take into account. Of course, what's going on above our heads, if there's dry air, Saharan dust around, uh, turbulence up there. But the biggest concern will be why widespread areas of high heat content stretching all the way out into the Atlantic and then stretching from the Caribbean into the Gulf. So like we saw with Ian, for example, uh, when it rolled over toward parts of the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, it went into an area of high heat content. So that is fuel for these things to rapidly intensify. And that's why we could see a system go from a category one hurricane to a category five in just a very short uh, amount of time, the rapid intensification. And the problem with that is not only does that mean a much stronger hurricane, but that would give us less time to prepare. But that's why I do this channel. I'm on top of this for you. So I'll give you a heads up throughout the season that if we have a storm and it's like, hey, it's, it's a tropical storm, maybe a category one hurricane. But if I see that it may be rolling over an area of high heat content, I'll be able to let you know and let you know that this thing could potentially get stronger and stronger in a quicker fashion. So that's what I'm watching. Now back to the water temperatures. The water temperatures themselves are warm. So this is at the surface, 28, 29 degrees Celsius through the Caribbean. That's 82, 83, almost 84 degrees Fahrenheit. That is above average for this time of year. And you take a look at this map where you're seeing this orange or this red shading, even into the Atlantic, but throughout much of the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean, that's not just warm water. This is telling me that it is unusually warm. Again, ahead of schedule. We're seeing everything about a month and a half uh, ahead of schedule as far as the water temperatures and as far as the heat content goes. And no, that's not an ideal sign. So I like to pass along good news on this channel. This is a piece of bad news. But as I mentioned, there are other factors too as we get into the hurricane season. But that is the biggest one to watch out for. These pockets of high heat content, the warm water, but the warm water that goes way down deep. Now, a few areas today could see that chance of some flooding. Watching the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, we have had the rain and storms around in many spots. And even back toward Haiti, a lot of us dealing with big breathing issues with 
the dust. I'm thinking of you. I've been going through those comments best I can. Let me know what you have in the comments section throughout the day. But this pocket here, watching out for some rain and storms on the way. Jamaica, we've had some around, but we definitely need to get some more over toward the Cayman Islands. Cuba, we could get a spotty shower. But the DR today in Puerto Rico, flooding will be a potential. Even some mudslides of potential in parts of the DR today. That's why yesterday I was mentioning, please share this information to get it out there. So as we go through the day, just very active again in Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. And as we stretch back toward parts of Haiti, we'll see some showers and storms. So this is today, and then I'll widen out the view in a second. Tomorrow, the same thing. And that also means some dangerous river crossings. In the DR, heads up in some of those river crossings. Again, we're going to get some rushing water coming off some of the mountainsides, and that could be life-threatening with this. And as we work our way to the end of the week, you still see more scattered showers and storms. So the rain totals just continue to build. Some of the rivers build, and we're going to watch out for that mudslide potential. Now, as we go through the next three days, so this is through Friday, in Puerto Rico, some spots not a whole lot, but a few spots showing these brighter colors where we could get three inches of rain or more or over 75 millimeters. We work our way back through the DR, and this is a big issue the next three days. This kind of white shading here, that's 100 millimeters or higher. That's four inches or more, and that's on top of what we already have. Best chance of some of the rain in Haiti, not so much Port-au-Prince, uh, Jacmel off toward the east as you get toward uh, the uh, higher terrain uh, as you approach the DR. That's where we'll see some of those higher totals. Now, uh, the wider view is showing a pop up storm possible in Cuba. We have the heat around. The heat around for many of us believes our rain chance is limited. But Costa Rica and Panama coming out of Colombia, we're going to see that chance of rain higher, even clipping by Nicaragua, Trinidad up through uh, Barbados, St. Lucia, dealing with some of that dust around. And you see that surge of moisture. Look at that right there. I'll show you the Eastern Pacific in a second. I want to get into that. This is by tomorrow afternoon, watching that flood potential here, but also the increased chance of rain. Colombia, Panama, trying to get back toward Costa Costa Rica in a pocket of uh, some uh, wet weather here south of Jamaica as we work our way into our Friday. Now here's the bigger picture of what we're seeing. One system, look at that winding up, not tropical in nature, north of Bermuda, brought us some of the rain yesterday in Bermuda. That is spinning up toward the Atlantic region of Canada. I'll get into that. And then across the middle of the U.S., there's going to be that chance of some severe weather over the next few days, especially as we get toward the end of the week and we keep an eye on that next system building. So one system moving out of New England up toward the Atlantic region of Canada later today with some gusty winds and some rain. But through the middle of the U.S., that's where there's going to be a better chance of rain and storms developing and that potential of a tornado threat back through the Tennessee River Valley, stretching all the way down to the south, watching parts of Oklahoma and Texas the next few days for that severe potential. You see by the end of the week how active it gets up to the north of the Caribbean and still watching again these pockets of heavier rain in parts of the Caribbean. The dust will start to lessen. Here's that system that was uh, in Bermuda lifting up toward a Newfoundland and you can see again a very active day. Keep me posted. New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia seeing some of the rain back and you may get a sliver of some of that snow squeaking in. But this system is around as we go throughout the day today. Some higher winds at times. Of course, the higher seas and choppier seas, but as we work our way into tomorrow, the system will be departing, and we're looking better Thursday into Friday, and then we'll keep an eye on that next system that's building back toward the U.S. Now, the eastern Pacific, the hurricane season starts uh, not too far off. On May 15th, it starts sooner than the Atlantic side because water temperatures are usually a little warmer, and I'm going to keep an eye on this moisture that's going to build near Panama and Costa Rica and eventually moving into the uh, eastern Pacific. Nothing organized now, but some Sometimes you could get something flaring up a little bit earlier, so monitoring that. Now, for Jamaica, it's a pop-up shower or a thunderstorm today, and as we work our way back toward the Cayman Islands, the rain chances is just not too high. We need some rain in many spots, and we just don't have a high chance, 20 30% chance, Trinidad and Tobago. We've had a couple showers the last few days, but nothing widespread. Barbados, 20 to 30% chance, and St. Lucia, 20 to 30% chance. The dust will lessen as we work our way uh, into tomorrow uh, through the end of the week into the weekend. Rain chance, 30% tomorrow. Grenada, a 20% chance, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We've had a couple little spotty showers around, and we've been watching the dust. Martinique, rain chance, 20% 
20%. 30% chance for us today in Dominica. Rain chance in Guadeloupe, minimal, a 20% chance. 30% chance Antigua and Barbuda. And over the next two days, a 30% chance St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat. 30% chance the next three days, Anguilla and St. Bart's. 30% chance St. Martin, Seba, and Stacia. And this is where we have the higher chance of rain and the flood threat. Let me know. Uh, keep me posted across uh, Puerto Rico on what you get or what you don't get. And still some of those showers and storms. The U.S. and British Virgin Islands, we were tracking that together yesterday with some areas of rain around. Some of us got nothing, but others got dumped on. So we'll be watching that again today. Dominican Republic, rain chance high, a 60 to 70% chance, 40 to 50% chance, but mainly eastern sections in Haiti. Bahamas were mainly on the dry side. Rain chance about 20% the next two days in the Turks and Caicos. A pop-up isolated shower storm. I'll show you that across Cuba. Belize, our rain chance is on the low side. It's on the low side of the Yucatan of Mexico. And as we get back through Aruba, watching some of that dust around, Curacao, same thing. Rain chance 20% for today, even over toward Bonaire. Bermuda, we're on the dry side over the next couple of days. Costa Rica, though, Panama, that rain chance gets higher. So watching out for some areas of flooding possible. Guyana and Suriname, still some showers and storms around, but the rain chance has, has dropped off. And in northern Venezuela, the rain chance about 30% and watching the dust. So again, areas of heavy rain flooding, watching some uh, thick dust in some areas, but it will soon improve. And I'm monitoring those tropical uh, conditions out there just like the heat content that is going to be the biggest thing as we get into the upcoming hurricane season and that hurricane season starts on June 1st. So thank you for joining uh, me. Thank you for being part of this channel and taking the time to subscribe and share it with others to get the right information out there. I hope you have a good rest of your day.